What's up everyone? So I am going and I'm flying on Iceland Air. It's my first time on the airline and I am flying to Reykjavik and I will be there for two whole days and I'm so excited. It's only five hours and 45 minutes, the flight. It's an overnight flight. So we're leaving New York at 11, 10 p.m. and we are arriving in Reykjavik around 8.30 in the morning. Iceland Air is definitely much more on the budgety side. You have to pay for everything. They're very strict about baggage allowance. They are very strict with no food, no beverages. You have to pay for literally everything on the flight. I'm actually curious, like do the seats even recline? Like I know that is something that should be obvious, but I flew an overnight flight to Central America on Avianca and I was shocked that the seats didn't recline. So yeah, new airline, Iceland is so beautiful. I'm so excited to explore it. They offer really cheap fares. I'm talking round trip, New York to Reykjavik for $450 round trip. Like what a deal that is. They also allow you to do a layover in Reykjavik. Let's say you're going New York to Europe. You want to do a layover there. A free layover, spend as many days as you want in Iceland. I believe they allow you up to seven. And it's a great way if you're going to Europe, but you want a cheaper rate and to be able to see Iceland, like take advantage of that. Iceland Air has grown since WOW Air completely went defunct. So WOW was well known for its extremely cheap prices, same way Norse has now, but they went bankrupt and uh, they used Iceland as a, one of those hubs as well that you fly US to Reykjavik and then to Europe really cheaply. But Iceland Air has grown in prominence with the way Iceland tourism has boomed specifically within the last 10 years. They are very strict about what bags they allow, especially your carry-on bag. No leeway, even if it's like a little bit too big, they're gonna make you pay a fee to check it on the plane. And yeah, they will check as you're boarding the flight. My backpack was barely of size. And uh, before I boarded the flight, they came around and they put this little tag on it. So that way when you're getting on the plane, they know that it was approved. If you don't have a tag on it, they very well may ask you to go and potentially even weigh it, which is crazy. That shows you again, like the budget theme. So I'm flying on a Boeing 737 MAX 8. Yeah, those are the ones that have been having issues recently. It features a 3-3 layout. What's crazy is I don't think my plane has a TV on it. So if they end up due, I'm gonna be pleasantly surprised. But I got an email from them saying there will be no in-flight Wi-Fi. There's a four hour time zone change. And on this flight, that is five hours, 45 minutes long. My biggest question is, will I even be able to get any sleep? On Avianca, I took a five hour flight going down to El Salvador and I slept for literally like two hours-ish. But next day in San Salvador, I was able to explore everything, had so much energy. So yeah, will I be able to get any sleep? We'll have to see. The only difference is that the Avianca flight left at two in the morning. So I was already pretty exhausted by the time I boarded. But here, 11, 10 p.m., I'm not gonna be tired when I get on the plane. So we'll see, big mystery to unfold. So in terms of things to keep me comfortable, I have a neck pillow right here. Also gonna roll with an eye mask and earplugs. I find the eye mask and earplugs to be very helpful. Neck pillow, eh, iffy, but I have room in my bag, so might as well. All right, this is enough yapping though. Time to board the flight and ride Iceland Air. Oh, okay, wait, I am so surprised about this. I expected it to come on, not have comfortable seats, how it would be very tight, how there wouldn't be TVs, but I am very shocked, I'm very impressed. The seats actually have a pretty decent cushion. Like, they're not hard. They are a little tight, especially in sort of terms of the width, but it's nothing that's crazy uncomfortable. Legroom, very surprised that it's much more than I expected. In terms of width, it's about 15 inches. That's just based off my rough estimation of using my phone as a measuring tool. Headrest is also adjustable too, which that's really nice because look, I adjust it and it makes it much more comfortable. If I wanna go like this, lean against the wall, I'm able to do that too. I can stretch my leg out nearly if all the way and find the seat in front of me. It's awesome. They provided us a pillow and a blanket, which is nice. I didn't expect that because it is such a short flight, even though it is an overnight flight. In terms of charging, they have a regular USB port 
the USB-A and I have an A to C converter because I have the newest iPhone. So make sure you get yourselves one of those if you have the new phone. I was saying before about how strict they would be on luggage. They didn't even check a single person's bag. Like they gave me the ticket originally to put around my thing to say it was okay, but no, they didn't care one bit. Also boarding was a little bit of a free for all. It was just everyone boarded at once, which I haven't seen an airline do before. So Reykjavik doesn't actually have an international airport in the city, so you fly into Keflavik airport, and then you gotta take a bus, which is about an hour from there. Kind of frustrating, I know. You fly into Keflavik, no matter the airline, doesn't matter if it's Iceland Air, United, Delta, you gotta go into that one. So in terms of complaints, so the phone charger did not work at all. I was on 25% when I boarded the flight, expecting that I would just plug it in, and the outlet just never worked never worked so that's frustrating because my phone is on like three percent right now and the tvs didn't work as well but we knew that going into the flight because they emailed us about 24 hours before letting us know of this issue wow okay so now i am here in iceland i have finally arrived and i gotta say the flight was smooth a lot smoother than i expected the seats the legroom so much more than i thought but in terms of width of the seat, I only had like a couple inches to my left, a couple inches to my right. It was rather tight, but that's okay. There was no on-flight food and drink service, uh, but I slept well because the seats were comfortable. The back was a little bit, had a little less support, but the actual cushion itself, the headrest, that was really nice. I slept for about three hours, which is more than I do normally on this short, five and a half hour overnight flight. So I'm very proud of that. Coming into Reykjavik, technically Keflavik, it was cool landing because we saw all of the different Icelandic landscapes right away. We saw how rural it is. We saw some of the cliffs and we saw the little town. It's cool. So I'm gonna go and check out this country now. The flight got us here on time. It was smooth, no bumps at all. And in terms of boarding, I found it rather efficient. It, you know, it was a free for all, everybody boards at once. Iceland Air is the flagship carrier of Iceland. The country also has Play Air as well.